<laughs> Donald Trump is celebrating today, saying good riddance to a Republican member of Congress on the former president's revenge list. Ohio's Anthony Gonzalez voted to impeach Trump, and he now says he will not seek re-election next year. Trump's response, you see it right there. One down, nine to go. Gonzalez insists he could have survived a Trump-backed primary challenge, but he says Trump is a cancer in the GOP and that he sees no point in serving when House Republican leaders are so beholden to the former president. Our panel's back with us now, now also including Jonathan Martin of the New York Times, who broke this story last night and spoke with Congressman Gonzalez. Uh, let's focus on that last point. He believes he could have survived yeah. the primary challenge, but this once rising star in the Republican Party says, I don't want a piece of it anymore. It's too toxic. That was the most telling part of my chat yesterday with uh, Mr. Gonzalez was he basically confessed that, you know, I could have put together the money and run a pretty brutal campaign to survive the primary, but I didn't want to come back. I don't want to come back to a Trumpified House GOP caucus. I don't want to bust my behind for the next year uh, to get renominated to come back in 2023 in the next Congress and serve with a bunch of Trump sycophants. It's just not what I want to do. And I think that recognition that that's where the party um, is going is perhaps one of the most important stories in this year's Congress. Uh, there will be, there will be, and we'll get to this part of the conversation in a minute. There will be some who say, sure, that's what he says, uh, but Trump is so powerful, maybe he would have lost the primary. We'll come to that part yeah. in a minute. We'll come to that part in a minute. Uh, and we won't know, obviously, if he doesn't run on the primary. But I just want to read from the interview he did with you. Politically, the environment is so toxic, especially in our party right now. This is the direction that we're going to go for the next two years and potentially four. And it's going to make Trump the center of our fundraising efforts and political outreach. That is not something I'm going to be a part of. What does it say to the Republican Party? This is a 37-year-old guy, a football hero in college, had an NFL career, uh, Cuban-American heritage, state of Ohio, Midwestern state. This was a guy who a couple years ago everybody was saying this is a future senator, a future governor, maybe a future national figure for the Republican Party. And now he wants no part of it. That is one of the most fascinating things here, I think. This is someone who you think they'd be bending over backwards to try and get in, the kind of profile and credentials that he has. And it does, and I think to Jonathan's point, raise real questions about where the Republican Party is going and what it means as they try and take back the majorities. Because one of the one theory of the case is that the path to getting back power is through you know, uh, suburban areas, more moderate areas. And what kind of candidates are you bringing in to try and win those types of seats? if the party is moving in this direction and people like uh, Mr. Gonzalez don't want to run anymore. Yeah, I think it shows that, like, the big tent populist approach is not where the Republican Party is going right now. Right now, the Republican Party is being controlled by who is faithful to Donald Trump, right. and that's who they're looking for. And I think it's so interesting that an incumbent looking to being in the majority is like, no, if this is how we're going to govern, right. I don't want to be a part of that. Right. Uh, Good and, point. Yeah. Right. And you have, you have a gleeful Trump today, and of course he's never subtle. Uh, as again, one of the statements, one down, nine to go, in a statement a little bit before that because he felt compelled to comment several times about this because he's happy. <laughs> uh, he says, Gonzalez has decided to quit after enduring a tremendous loss of popularity of which he had little, since it's ill-informed and otherwise very stupid impeachment vote. There he goes on and on and on again, not subtle at all. And the guy's leaving. You could at least be quiet if you want it to be. The challenge here is this is a Republican district, but the candidate that Trump had already supported is a former aide, Max Miller, uh, described as a cocky bully with a quick trigger temper. Uh, Mr. Miller himself concedes uh, that he has a lot of things in his younger days that he's not happy about, not proud of. Uh, in later days, he has been accused, he completely denies this, uh, of uh, striking a former girlfriend at one point. Uh, so this is, you, you have a 37-year-old Cuban-American football guy, Ohio Stanford guy, great resume versus a Trumpy candidate who, uh, let's just say, has a more tarnished resume. Unsavory details in his, in his background. Uh, look, I mean, yeah, yeah, if it was a case on the merits, I think that the, you know, neutral observer would say like, ah, yes, better candidate X to run in election X, right? right. But that's not the situation that we're dealing with right exactly. now. And I think that it's really important to yeah. notice that the, pre the former president is celebrating. This is part of the problem. People who speak out against the president, the, against Trump, don't do so until they're on their way out the door, by and large, except for in a very, very yeah. small subset of cases like the Liz Cheney's and the Adam Kinzinger's of this world, and yes, Gonzalez's vote, but it becomes too hard, and so they go, right. and then right. there's nobody left except for the Trumpy people, so it's kind of like a self 
cleansing situation in a way, which I don't mean to you know, use that that's right. word lightly. This is the first that's, of yeah. those the 10 continues. Republicans, right. but it's not the first Republican who clashed with Trump right. to exit. Right. We saw a huge number of Republicans either retire right. or decide not to run for re-election right. and, uh, and, 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 and when Trump was president. And so you see, you see some up there. These are Trump Republicans who've been hurt by the impeachment vote. John Katko was trying to negotiate to create a bipartisan January 6th commission. He got rolled by the Republican leadership because Trump was mad. You see Liz Cheney, Fred Epton, uh, Congresswoman Herrera Butler, Kinzinger, Gonzalez. Right. Uh, those are those. You know, they've all been hurt. They're standing, right. and there are primary challenges against several, if not most of them. And then there's 17 Republicans who either voted in the House to impeach or in the Senate to convict. Uh, you're making the point. Congressman Gonzalez, again, viewed by many as a future rising star in the Republican Party. This is about Trump, not about majority, not right. about Republican right. governance. The Republican right. Party has become about what does Trump want, not about conservative principles or anything else. Yeah, is it's that wrong? totally detached from policy. And that's one of the most fascinating parts of this is uh, it's entirely a personality issue now. And, you know, will you pledge fealty to the personality? Uh, it's not about policy X or Y or Z. That, that's totally uh, separate from this. And I think that's what troubles a lot of conservatives, especially, is that this is not the old Reagan versus Ford 76. Are you going to be a moderate party or a conservative party? It's just, are you for the big guy or are you against the big guy? And I think that is um, a whole different set of fish. It's just... You know, it's, it's something that you see in a lot of other countries all the time. And sure. we don't really think of American politics as being like that, but it's a pretty common thing to see around the world with this idea of fealty to leaders and populism. Sure. And you're seeing it. It can happen. Right. It can yeah. happen here. It can happen here. Yeah. But as the re <laughs> Remember, Republicans are likely to be in the majority in the House after the 2022 right. election just based on redistricting only. Yeah. Right. And so if this is the way the Republican Party is going, that means this is the way the people who will control the U.S. House of Representatives yeah. will be governing from that standpoint, and that's something I think people at home should be thinking about. Just one if, last if, fast, if, you, yeah. if you remember, right after the impeachment vote, you know, the 10 especially said, we will be fine, we will survive. Right. Uh, you would have to say on this day, uh, on this day anyway, yeah. Trump is winning this argument in, the, in Republican politics. Yeah, and I, look, I think that this sets up a, a midterm showdown next year in 2022 that is going to be as significant in the Republican Party as any I can recall. Think about 2010 and 2014, the so-called Tea Party versus establishment primaries. I mean, that looks small and inconsequential compared to what next year is going to be. If those nine House members, plus Murkowski, who is the only senator in the GOP who voted to convict, can survive, or some of them can survive, that will say a lot. But is there any is there any evidence that Kevin McCarthy, insert laughter here, or Mitch McConnell, it's a more um, nuanced question, are willing to stand up to Trump and say, stop this. Stop this. Stay out of these primaries. We want these people to stay. You're laughing at me. I know. It's fine. It's fine. I asked for it. Public yeah. I, have, <laughs> <laughs> I do think you hear from a lot of part, you know, members and leaders that they would like to sort of move forward and right. talk about other things. You'll hear them talk about that. They'd like to talk about fiscal issues. They'd like to talk about Biden. They'd like to talk about inflation. But um, that's a yeah, different thing. It would yeah. take a move of courage by either the leader of the GOP or by these rank and file members. And Nobody seems to want to, you know, do that really, really hard thing that it would take to actually mm -hmm. execute the survival. That is possible, probably, but right. not palatable. Right. So, again, the people who are seeking power, I'd say maybe get power, both the House and Senate after the midterm elections, continue to show fealty to a man who, again today, wrote a letter to the Georgia Secretary of State promoting the big lie. That is where the Republican Party wants to put, place its bet still.